All right. My name is Tamara Thibault and I am a national team member for Boxing Canada at 75 kilos. Okay. Thibault, spell your last name. Thibault spelled T-H-I-B-E-A-U-L-T. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I have to think about it a little bit. <laughs> okay. How tall are you? I am 5 foot 11 and 3 quarters, so it makes me close to 6 foot. I know, right? <laughs> you almost had six feet. I almost had it. I was like right there. Uh, I had my first fight in 2007, because when I was 12 years old, but I've been boxing around since I was like 10, more, more or less. Well, like, the way I see it is when I wanted to go into this fight, I wanted to perform well, and for me to perform well is to try to make it as, as similar as a sparring match. I never sit in a sparring match, so why would I sit in a fight? So I was just thinking, no, I don't need that. I don't need to sit down. I'm gonna stand up, I'm gonna catch my breath, I'm gonna listen to my coach. It's the same thing. It's just, there's like a thousand people around me and there's lights and it's a little bit more nerve wracking, but I was trying to keep it as very, as, as small as possible. In that sense, I mean, to keep, you know, my opponent's there, my coach is there, and that's the only thing that matters. Okay, so my parents had us kids very young. Like we have, I have three other siblings, so we're four. And my dad was a, a football player. And well, my parents are very ambitious, ambitious people. Therefore, even though with all the kids and everything that was going on, my dad still pursued his dream as, as a football player. And uh, he was drafted in the CFL for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in 2003. So starting then, the whole family kind of just moved here and we, we stayed here until 2012. And I mean, we grew up here. Like, I, I, like all my memories basically almost are here. Are here are at the Regina Boxing Club or at, in, in Cathedral that's like really close to here. Like everything around us right now is familiar to me. Well, what's your dad's name? And what position did he play with the... His name Redding? is Patrick Tebow, and he was a wide receiver. My dad got involved in boxing because during the off-season, to keep in shape, he would go to the boxing club, you know, because he, it was a good, it's a really, like, good and, like, really, com like, full, complete body workout. So during the off-season, he would go there, and when I was a kid, I was, when I was a kid, I just followed him there because my dad is like my biggest inspiration. I just always want, I just always loved my dad. I always loved what he, what he was doing and I always thought he was just so great. And I remember being at the gym one time and we were, Shay, Shay, Shay who's still at the gym right now was showing us our boxing positions. And I got in my boxing position and Shay came over and shoved me and he was like, he's like, Oh wow, you're gonna be strong. You're gonna be good, just like your dad. And then, like from that moment on, it just clicked. I was like, Yeah, yeah, I can do this. I'm gonna be really good. I'm gonna be a good boxer. And then, like, and then, like soon after, we had gone to Swift Current. My dad fought this uh, this guy from there or around there, anyways, and just knocked him out cold. Like he was just was just like a he was out before even like the like. Before he even hit the ground, it was just unbelievable. And I was just like, I want to do that. As, you know, <laughs> I want to do that. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to feel that feeling. You want to knock people out. Yeah, I don't know. It was, I was, <laughs> I was like 10. <laughs> that's probably not the most, the sanest thought I've had. But I was like, that's cool. So, and then eventually over the years, it just, it just became my own passion. You know, like at first it was just something I would do out of habit like okay I go to the boxing club Monday Wednesday Friday and then eventually I was like okay no this is this is really fun and I could really do something I could really be like I could really be like 
one like one well, one of the greats. I could I have the potential. I believe I believe that I have the potential to be an amazing boxer. So then I guess just the fact that I was I was thinking, yeah, I could be great. I could I could be world champion. I could I could do this. I could do that. And then in 2012, they added uh, women's boxing to the Olympics. When they did that, I was just like, that's it. I'm going to the Olympics. I'm going to win the gold Olympic medal. I was like, I don't know how. I don't know what weight class. I don't know what's going to happen. But that's my goal, and that's what I'm going for. And just since then, my I have one goal, one target, one vision, and that's what I'm going for. Hasn't always been perfect, you know, there are a few bumps on the road, but it's just about, it's about the journey and it's about the, pro the process of getting there. And, you know, as I grow older and as I get more experience, the things I'm learning are really important and really valuable. Um, I think the, I think the most challenging moments, well, it's not just one moment, it's moments in my journey of per se has been this last year because I went from being like a like a national level athlete to an international level athlete and it was just the level that we had to kind of adapt to was just tremendous so for me it was hard but I, I think I at first I took it hard and now like I understand that it's part of the uh, it's a part of the process the process and it's part of you know of be of becoming tougher it's, it's part of becoming smarter in the ring and out of the ring and it really made me realize that you know mental preparation is important and you know your mental attitude when you get in the ring and how you how you see yourself is your self image it's super important so I think that's been the toughest part of my journey you know every athlete hits a wall at some point it's inevitable Every athlete hits a wall, every athlete has doubts, every athlete, you know, um, eventually questions their, their abilities, but it's the people that surpass that and, you know, and use that to move forward are the people that succeed. So that's what I'm trying, that's what I'm doing right now, that's what I'm trying to do right now, and not going to lie, it hasn't been easy, but it's worth it. Um, I've had a lot of just wonderful moments um, one of two of my favorite moments probably uh, are the most recent ones from last year at Continentals when I came home with gold which was just a it was just a feeling that was just so un it's just a feeling so unexplainable it's like I came there I had a job to do and I did it and I was just, I was just so happy and the team we had was amazing. Like our team, like Boxing Canada's national team is outstanding. Like the energy we have and the support we have for each other is something that can never, that can never be just replicated or forced or I don't know what it is, but we just have such an amazing group of people. And you know, that honestly, that made me probably go the whole distance you know it was always positive energy always just, just pushing everybody's just pushing each other forward and it was just great and then last the most recent one is when we went to the Commonwealth Games in Australia um, once again the team was just out of this world and the, the, the moments we had together there are just things I'm gonna remember always like I laughed cried I'm a little emotional. Everybody expects it. Eventually, I'm gonna cry at some point, <laughs> but I like, always end up laughing it off. And it's just, and even like going into the ring, like you know, we were always there to support each other, always believing in each other. And when you have people that believe in you, it makes you believe in yourself even more. So, I think those two moments were the, probably my my best so far. So you got gold at the Continental. I got bronze at the Commonwealth Games in Australia this past April, or yeah, April. Yeah, it was April. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And was the and then you you got gold at the Continental in 2017, which was okay. June last year. Was that your first appearance on the international yeah. stage? Yeah. On top of that, it was like my first appearance on the international stage. No one knew who I was, so I just got in there and I just I won. I won, and I was like, and I, I don't know, when I got, when I went there, I was like, 
I'm very, I'm very optimistic. I was like, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna win, this is my tournament, I got this. And you're we like, okay, yeah, sure, just focus on your performance and blah, 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 whatever. Anyways, that's fine. But my dad was my coach for a little while, and he always said, uh, you gotta, you gotta come in there like you've already succeeded. You gotta, your vision, your vision has to be so clear that when you win or when you succeed, it's as if, it was meant to happen. It's a very, you know, it might come off as arrogant, but confidence like that is not easy to come by for everybody. But once you get that winning feeling, it just it just shows in your performances, and it shows in you know the way you, you f and it just shows in the way you feel, in the way you act, when everything. Well, you know, I found my happy place in the boxing gym because that's where I felt at home. Um, my, my advice is find something you love doing and something that makes you happy and, and stick to it. Just put all that energy and all that emotion and everything that you have in that and the rest doesn't matter. Because whether we like it or not, kids are mean. Kids are ruthless and even though we are taking the right steps towards changing that and, and educating our youth and trying to bring people together, there's always going to be that bunch of people that are going to try to bring others down. Usually it's the response that the bullies want. And if, you, if, you're, if your mind is clear and you're doing something you love and somebody's bothering you, usually whatever they're saying, their negative energy, won't affect you. I think that's the best way to kind of fend off bullies is just not responding. And when you're headed somewhere else and you know you're, you have something positive, just focus on that and the rest will just go away. So not give them what they want. No, no, exactly. Because only, no one can hurt you without your permission. And I believe that 100%. No one can hurt you without your permission. To an extent, to an extent, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, Even yeah. boxing, you know, we have to consent to box. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. but I think I'm lucky that I found boxing and that I really stuck to it and I was good at it. Honestly, that's probably that's probably what got me through what I was going through. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoy that little uh, sit down with Tam here. Uh, Tam, um, just where can we find you on it? Okay, you guys can find me on Instagram, on Facebook. On Instagram, it's underscore Tam, T A M M, period, Tibol. I'm gonna spell it out for you guys T H I B E A U L T. I'll, I'll put it on the screen somewhere here. <laughs> and on Facebook, it's Tamara, Tamara Tibol. Simple as that. Uh, two M's, two M's in my name. Okay. Don't forget. Okay. So give her a follow. Uh, she's gunning for Tokyo 2020. Yes, I am. All right. And uh, give her all the support. And yeah, hey, thanks for Thank taking the time you. to sit and chat. And um, I'm going to let you go get to your breakfast. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So I'm a kind of hungry. My girl's got to eat.